So bladder issues, one in three women, very easily. It's the gotta go, gotta go, laugh, cough, sneeze, and you leak. Super embarrassing, debilitating. What people think of often as lifestyle issues are really tied to things like depression, isolation, anxiety, falls, absenteeism, presenteeism. So super big and expensive. So hi everyone, I'm Missy Lavender. I'm the founder and CEO of Renalis Health, which if you took Latin, you know means pelvis, gives you a clue what we're focused on. So we're creating software to treat conditions below the belt or as they're known, pelvic health disorders. A lot of fun things you can think of the buckets as leaking, bleeding, chronic pain, right? Those sound wonderful. Um, these overwhelmingly affect women. I mean, and we are starting with probably the biggest bucket in that space of leaking. So bladder issues, one in three women very easily. It's the gotta go, gotta go, laugh, cough, sneeze, and you leak. Super embarrassing, debilitating. What people think of often as lifestyle issues are really tied to things like depression, isolation, anxiety, falls, absenteeism, presenteeism. So super big and expensive. So the whole bucket of pelvic health disorders is about $100 billion spend. Bladder takes at least 70% of that pie every year, which is ridiculous. And for anybody that's black, brown, or low income, access and equity are challenging. So start with the fact that most of the providers are in major cities. And if you're lucky enough to be in Cleveland, like we are in Chicago, LA, whatever, better. Um, but what will often be prescribed to you as the first line of care is something called a pelvic floor PT. Well, there's about 10,000 of those. So that right there is a problem, not to mention you have to pay for them, find them, et cetera. If you get a script to a medication for the overactive bladder scenario, you have a very low adherence traditionally. And um, there's some really important side effects that cause that to happen. Um, and patients really fall off of this care pathway pretty quickly. And as reported, it's often because they don't even know there's anything else to do after that first appointment. Providers who really co-created uh, the platform you're gonna meet in a minute are intensely frustrated. You know, they spend a lot of time with these patients, especially the OAB, the overactive bladder patients, go through this whole protocol, give them things to do, and then over 60% don't even come back. So there's lots that they can talk to them about, but they never get there. So we're creating a solution really focused on um, both of these collective uh, pain points. So I want you to meet Cece, she, her pronouns. So she will be the first digital therapeutic to address bladder disorders, both the overactive bladder and the gotta go, gotta go, or the um, left cough, sneeze, and you leak stress incontinence. So she takes data from validated embedded questionnaires, a series of bladder diary, and then creates this individualized care pathway for the patients over an eight week period. And the really important thing here is only if the provider needs to get involved, does the provider get involved. So if the patient is getting worse or um, they have identified something in the care pathway they'd like to, to talk about, then they are flagged up to the provider. But meanwhile, CC treats them um, with or without medication. So from the provider's perspective, you take this high touch patient and you really um, basically create a higher ROI patient, which is interestingly, because in contrast for the payers, this is a very value-based way to treat a chronic patient. So we're super excited because we've got three products right now, but the, there's a, a market opportunity that presented itself that we are moving forward, forward with very quickly. So we started with overactive bladder. We have that product lined up for FDA clearance once the market settles down. Um, but we were approached by a strategic to actually create kind of version 1.5 of that, kind of frost that cake with something that does not need FDA clearance. So it's it's um, our, our basic treatment plus med medication and monitoring. We have two pilots, a large urology um, nurse navigation company and a big private urogynecologist in Chicago that we're going to be piloting this with starting June 1st. And then we've got three um, non-dilutive grants teed up in the next three or four months. Our go-to-market strategy right now, we're going to start with that nurse navigation partner who sees about 15,000 female urology patients with overactive bladder. And then um, as well, the KOLs that we've known because we've been in the space for about 20 plus years. Our team, I couldn't be more excited about them. 150 years we figured out of collective pelvic health experience, lots of commercialization um, and strategy in this space and also in digital health. So the ask today is we are raising a $500,000 convertible note round, and we would love to talk to um, anyone on the, on the call who's interested or knows anyone who's interested. Thank you. Missy, thank you.
Um, you're obviously in a sector and have founded a business which is taking on thorny issues that some people might consider embarrassing or things like that. How have you addressed, um, you know, approaching these specific sectors and seeing it as an opportunity? Well, there, there in lies the rub, right? You just identified it, Jamie. This is a place that, for whatever reason, in women's health, no one has dared to go. I mean, they there's lots of devices and things you can put in your vagina and cagle your heart out and all that. And, and I think those are fantastic. There's drugs, but this opportunity to complement the existing solutions has not been developed yet. And so I view CC as, um, you know, where no man dares to tread. I mean, we're going to, we're going to talk about it. We, we um, find a lot of receptivity from patients um, who just want something that they can do for themselves in the privacy of their own home at 10 o'clock when the kids are in bed or, you know, whenever they want to. And she has a very credible medical and approachable voice. So it definitely has led to high engagement um, from the users that, that have gone through our, our uh, proof of concept study and, and other use cases. So we're super excited about it. Um, Missy, you know, let's, let's go to the elephant in the room, right? You're really a digital therapeutic at its core. Um, and we just saw Pair go bankrupt, you know, how has that impacted you and the broader industry in terms of taking a look at the opportunity in front of you? Yes, brilliant question. Um, so Pair was a trailblazer and, and I give them a lot of credit for setting up the reimbursement, CPT codes, HICFIX codes, all of those things. Um, there's a big bill that they really, really um, funded um, all of the lobbying around to get Medicare to be able to pay for these products. But we get to learn a lot of lessons. I did investor relations for two public companies. I can tell you, we will never go public with a SPAC. Um, we will also over uh, deliver and under promise. And um, we are going to do our work on the three-legged stool of getting the patients, the providers and the payers, wherever my triangle went, um, lined up behind us because we have a value proposition that works for all of them. And that's really part of the key to success. So. Um, you know, I wish them well and I appreciate what they did. You know, unfortunately, you know, pioneers get shot with arrows and we're just going to try to dodge the bullets, change metaphors there, but get it. That's great. Missy, thank you so much. If you'd like to connect with Missy post this, please do fill out the poll. Um, there's one quick question, Missy, which came from the audience. Mm -hmm. just like you touch on really quickly. Are you planning on leveraging generative AI into your CC chatbot on your roadmap? Absolutely. I, that's all I can say. <laughs> Stay tuned. Absolutely. <laughs> Exclamation point. Right. <laughs> right. Right.